Yo, what's good, people? So brand new episode today. This is a very, very special one. Today, I am with a very good friend of mine, Rashawn here. He is a soon-to-be software engineer at Coinbase. Very, very exciting. Um, and also just a fanatic when it comes to the cryptocurrency space. So here's Rashawn. I'm going to let him kind of jump in and just talk a little bit about who he is really quick, just so you guys can you know, get to know him. The floor is yours. Yeah. Hey y'all, um, really excited to be here today. I know uh, Elijah is very into crypto and um, I'm excited to be talking to you guys about crypto today too and all the opportunities that are here. Um, the space is here to stay, although it might have some market uh, fluctuations and um, all that like as we've seen over the years, but it's definitely here to stay. And if you, if you invest the right time and energy into the right projects, um, you could potentially make a lot of good money and uh, uh, just learn a lot about what's in store for us in the future. That's crazy because I, I honestly, this space has grown so fast in such little time that it's just, it's, it's just so beyond me as well. So just first off, just wanted to give more people more context of like who you are. So What's sort of like your background in cryptocurrency? Like, how did you get into it? Like, how far has it like gotten you so far? Yeah, for sure. So um, I'd say I started around like five years ago. That's when um, I'd say like 20, late 2015. Um, that's when I used to do a lot of like online, like uh, uh, online stuff, like selling gift cards and all. Um, uh, and uh, I used, I didn't never actually saw Bitcoin as an investment vehicle, but rather just a means of uh, transfer. I was like, okay, online money, I can convert it. I can pay someone uh, the equivalent Bitcoin and they'll pay me equivalent Zell or PayPal. I was like, okay. How much, I used how much to make Bitcoin those... were you using at this time? Like in terms of like transactions, like. Well, Bitcoin at that time was uh, like 400, $500 um, a coin. So, I mean, it was like, 0.4, 0.5 BTC being transferred was like a normal amount of money. Wow. Uh, money then, obviously, that is a lot of money now. Um, yeah. But yeah, like I said, I never really looked at it as an investment vehicle then until um, until like early um, or late 2016 or early 2017. I'm just like, I just watched my like money, I just came to my Bitcoin wallet and I was like, wait, this is like going parabolic. This is crazy what's going on here. And then at that time too, also like, I think Bitcoin cash came up, came about the fork. And um, I just had an equivalent amount of my, of Bitcoin cash, like free money stay in my, while I was like, this is very interesting. I really need to look into this, learn more about it. So that's where like my fascination about it um, started, started to, uh, really try to understand the technology behind it, blockchain. Um, how does it work? Read the white paper, obviously very confused then. I was just a high schooler. Um, so just doing constant reading on uh, random blogs, like uh, what is what is the blockchain? How does cryptogra cryptography work? How does it actually uh, ensure um, uh, like security? And how does the, this whole network work? So it was just a lot of that. And I know like uh, early 2017 that's when uh, me and you we were just part of the uh, like the uh, the 2017 bull run craze and always looking into projects uh, looking into new like ICOs and um, like being wowed by some companies but others uh, yeah it was just a crazy time I definitely saw the potential um, in the market and the coins but it was very early stage then um that that year i also just started to look for more opportunities to be involved in the space and um started working as a uh, customer support representative for this company called ethos uh, they were trying to create a e universal wallet which was basically uh, a wallet to store all your coins and you actually own it because you own the private keys to it and um they did really really good um i think they sold to Voyager, um, they have a coin called VGX. Um, Voyager is a great platform. Um, if you guys are trying to invest, just a quick plug. Um, but so but your, yeah, I, yeah, that's mm -hmm. that's your journey so far has just been kind of crazy. Like, if anyone has been like 
in tune with the cryptocurrency market like that I know of personally, honestly, it's been you. And fast forward to today, you are, you know, going to be an incoming software engineer at Coinbase. They recently went, you know, public. They're the biggest cryptocurrency exchange market like in the world now. Like I think what when it comes to assets under management. So this is crazy. So, you know, this is kind of a part of your life now in a sense. And I know you're working on other projects um, when it comes to cryptocurrency that we can maybe talk about in a different kind of, you know, setting. But just so my, my viewers can kind of get a lot more value from this as well. What are some, what would you say is like your top three or top five, you know, cryptocurrency and blockchain projects that you're focused on, not necessarily for, you know, short term, but like maybe also long term benefits yeah of course um so yeah there are there are a lot of cryptocurrencies out there with different use cases and uh, potentially different um just like very early stage still and we don't know uh like their potential to later um but definitely there there are some um cryptocurrencies that have been working on their tech for a while now and they're they've already like uh pushed out like their uh, their almost final product and what it would look like and how it perform. Um, I would definitely say like first you should always have some um, amount of BTC because it's it's digital gold and it's here to stay. Um, if the crypto market is uh, like BTC is like um, everyone owns it, institutional investors that's what they're yeah. hoarding now and that's what they're accumulating. Um, if you want a stable bet in the cryptocurrency market, I, I would say that would definitely be your top 10 like picks if you go on coin market cap, which is where you can view all cryptocurrencies. Um, so first, I, I definitely say if you're looking for uh, some safety net I, in the crypto space, although it's still volatile, I would say go for Bitcoin as your first. Um, there's still huge uh, price potential. Um, if the whole, if you imagine the whole world going on to um, using cryptocurrencies and using Bitcoin as a store of value and more institutional investors uh, onboarding themselves with uh, custodial services like Coinbase, um, the, the price potential is, uh, uh, it's still there, it's, it's massive. Um, yeah, which so is, I'd which say is definitely that. Yeah, which has actually been the case. Institutional investors have been pouring into market um, it's, it's been crazy because there was a, a study done. I talked about it a, a while ago as well, but the amount of Bitcoin being mined today is not, you know, it's not keeping up with the amount of Bitcoins being taken off the market because institutional investors are pouring billions of dollars into it. Every, like every other day you hear a new company or, you know, a private company or a public company going in there and just taking out like 50,000 Bitcoin, like just in one go. And it's like, they're storing it in you know, cold wallets, like away from the blockchain. So, you know, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. the, the supply is shrinking. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, I, I will definitely say if Bitcoin is a direct hedge against like fiat currency. So, um, and also like, you don't have to have a whole Bitcoin. That's what some people think. Oh, Bitcoin is like 55K or, or whatnot. Like, I, I don't know if I should invest. It's, I, I think dollar cost averaging would be a, um, a good way to get into Bitcoin and you can just do like $20 a day, $20 a week, whatever you do. It, it doesn't matter. I, I think what price you get into right now, it's just like the percentage differences. So even if Bitcoin is a hundred thousand um, dollars, I, I don't think it necessarily uh, necessarily matters uh, it, if you just dollar cost average your way through. So um, I will definitely say that should be a good way to enter um, uh, as a position into BTC. Next coin, I'd say Ethereum for sure. Um, so Ethereum has been making big, big improvements in their um, in their protocol. Now they're moving on to proof of stake uh, instead of proof of work. Basically, you always hear about um, people crunch computers in the world crunching up numbers using electricity to uh, guess some kind of number. And once they've guessed that number, they get rewards and Bitcoin. Um, Right, so that that is that that whole process is called proof of work, and um, uh, that's what traditionally all cryptocurrencies use. And now Ethereum is moving on to something called proof of stake. Proof of stake eliminates um, miners with computation 
computational power um, whatsoever. I know like you've always probably heard on the news of oh, crypto Bitcoin takes so much energy to run um, and uh, um, all that. And so Ethereum with their proof of stake um, protocol is really going to solve that. It's also going to lower the fees for uh, the transaction fees, which have been a huge, um, huge problem uh, lately. Like they have like NFTs, if you've heard of those, just um, basically you're transferring digital uh, ownership around. And uh, like while you're doing that, you want to make sure you're on a platform that has that has a uh, very low transaction transaction fees. Um, and so proof of stake, once Ethereum has fully implemented that and put it out there, uh, they're doing it in stages. And by the end of the year, I, I believe it should be up. Um, you could uh, potentially see a lot of gains um, there. So that's you. Ethereum, yeah, Ethereum is a bit different than Bitcoin. Uh, well, very different in that you can uh, with their with smart contracts. So smart contracts you can basically think about as uh, like programs um, that live on top of the blockchain. And you can communicate with those programs um, to facilitate like um, to facilitate like autonomous, uh, I'd say governance or for example, an escrow system where if you have uh, um, Toby and me, uh, we wanna make a transaction, but we don't trust each other. So in, in the real world, we would go to a third party that we both trust and we'd be to, in order to make the transaction, we'd first take my money, give it to the third party. Toby would give his money to the third party and, uh, uh, and, and then he would make the exchange happen. Right. But with smart contracts, for example, you could easily trust because the blockchain um, is permanent, it's uh, uh, censorship resistant, it's uh, immutable. Um, you could, uh, I would send money to the smart contract. Toby would send money to the smart contract. And right, so right when both of us have sent the money, it would just transact it on, uh, on right. both sides. And it takes so away you, the middleman, right? It takes away the middleman. So that's what, um, there have been a lot of like decentralized like um, apps, dApps, that's what they're called, uh, that have been built using Ethereum that haven't been utilized as much because of the high transaction fees. And once like, the the system has moved to proof of stake once um, uh, the potential of I think the space would be um, realized uh, because Ethereum has so many developers um, right now Solidity developers I, I mean in in the grand scheme of things I, I don't think there are enough blockchain developers but if you look at all of the blockchain developers in the world um, most of them are in, uh, working with Solidity and Ethereum. And so they already have a huge development community. They already have a lot of projects out there that just are waiting to be utilized, just are waiting to be um, run on, um, on something that's faster and uh, um, uh, goes with less fees. So I think huge, and, and also like they're also proof of stake. The whole um, thing behind that is staking. So you, um, by staking your coins, by taking your coins that you own, Ethereum you own, and locking it up in a wallet or giving it to a validator node, um, you will earn rewards back in Ethereum. So How high could these rewards go potentially? I think right now, if you do it with Coinbase, it's like they're doing five to 6%. That's like the general um, or the standard right now that I'm seeing. Mm -hmm. um, Keep in mind I'm not. The, the mm -hmm. state, your savings account gives you 1% it, like um, a year. So 6%, that's six times what your savings account will give you. Exactly. No, that's uh, very true. And also like if you believe in Ethereum to be a, um, a big part of our lives in the future, like accumulating 6% now, the dollar value of that later would be an insane amount. So um yeah, and, and you compound this. That's the that's the power of uh, compounding. Like people don't realize until they actually like see the numbers or see a graph and um, in front of them because our minds doesn't don't, don't think um, in that way. So um, we're very yeah, we're we very short, like, short 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 mind short side sided a lot of times. Yeah. Like I personally am too victim to this. When I look at graphs, especially when it comes to investments. A lot of people focus on the one month, two month, three months, 
But what, what really the winners, what I've seen is the winners really, they look at the one year, the, not even the one year, the five year, 10 year, you know, 15 year mm-hmm. horizon, bigger picture, kind of zooming out and seeing, you know, how is this thing going to move in the long term? So that, I think that's huge. Ethereum, honestly, I, I, I believe has huge potential. I'm not too familiar with the technology, but, you know, just the fact that a bunch of applications are being able to be run on top of it, where, you know, it makes it easier to use for people to transact, for people to, you know, just live on this blockchain as well. It makes it really interesting, you know, like a lot can come out of it. Mm-hmm. I don't want to put words into your mouth, but I know we've talked about this one coin and you mentioned proof of stake and you also mentioned, um, you know, high fees and, you know, a- along those lines, I was, you know, what are some solutions for, you know, high fees out there that, you know, potentially, because I know there's another technology out there, proof of history, um, and how does that kind of tie into, you know, valuable cryptocurrency that could be in the market? Yeah, of course, which leads me perfectly to my third pick, um, Solana. So Solana is basically, um, they've rethought the whole system or whole like um, architecture or protocol of putting, um, taking sourcing transactions into block and putting them onto the uh, uh, blockchain. Um, They have very, very talented people working on their team um, that have worked on some of like the radio frequency technologies and all the, uh, all like the lower level stuff that we so heavily rely on today. And so it's not surprising that they've come up with such a brilliant solution. And um, just to just to give you an idea of um, uh, of their like technology, um, I would definitely recommend. Um, uh, actually, could I share my screen? Oh yes, perhaps 100%. In, for a second. Yeah. So we are going to head on to this website really quick. Just I think it should be a really fast demonstration to just how fast Solana really is. Um, hopefully, yeah, but just to give you a high overview, uh, I think Solana and Solana's speed um, and transaction fees costs enables a whole um, world of applications that were just not simply possible using, um, using other decentralized uh, protocols. Um, the reason why in today we were fine using PayPal, we're fine using a lot of like centralized stuff is because it works so great. We don't have to wait. There, there's always someone on the other side um, buying or selling and uh, you don't have to wait for your transactions to, to go through because uh, the, it's a central centralized system. And that's often the benefits of having a centralized system. Like your UI, your UX is the user experience is just going to be so much better because it's faster. Um, so that's what uh, Solana enables. I'm going to quickly go sharing my screen now. Can you see my screen? Uh, yep. It says break okay. Solana. <laughs> so yeah, this is just a quick demonstration of how fast Solana is. I'm going to do it on their test network. Um, Basically, we're going to be sending transactions onto the Solana network, and uh, we're going to see how fast they actually um, uh, get validated and put on the blockchain. Um, so I'm going to press this, and we're going to do it for 15 seconds. I'm going to be just pressing random keys. So these are all, every single block is one single transaction that's being sent. Uh, once they turn green, that's all the transaction being um, at all the other blockchains. So it's going to quickly compare what it's, um, OK. So it's confirming it. Um, this is a test network. If you want to do it with actual uh, actual Solana um, with your wallet, um, you could do that too. So when you're sending Solana, for example, to somebody, so it's going to be be, it's going to be sent as fast as these things are kind of lighting up. Right. So let's see. Um, so we sent 443 transactions within 15 seconds. 
And that only took up 0.059% of Solana's capacity. But if you were to do the same thing on Ethereum, that would have taken 196% of their capacity. Same thing on Bitcoin, that would be 642% of Bitcoin's capacity. Um, so what does that really mean though? Like capacity, like in terms of... So every, every 10 minutes, for example, in Bitcoin's case, they tally up all the transactions and they put them on the blockchain. Um, so uh, Solana's, uh, Serana's, Solana's uh, time to take the transaction, put them onto the blockchain is it's like in, in milliseconds. And um, so it, it's like, it has to do with the block time. So uh, Ethereum's block time is 10 seconds. Um, Bitcoin's block time is 10 minutes. Solana's block time is, I think right now they're at 400 milliseconds. They're trying to cut that down to 80 milliseconds, which is, um, which is how fast um, it takes um, electricity or internet, whatever, to go through optic fiber cables, So, which is insanely fast. And so each of these transactions are actually on the blockchain. So we can go on the Explorer and check it out. Um, that this is a successful transaction. Um, wow. So this is this is insanely cool. the The fact that that Solana can have like just applications like this just to test the network out is insane. Like you wouldn't get that on Ethereum. Like if you were to send th this many transactions on the Ethereum network, it would clog up the network. And right. once the network is clogged, the transaction fees go insanely high because because in order to in order for your transaction to be mined and put onto the blockchain, people need to pay an, an absurd amount of fees. You need to, if you want your transaction to be faster, you need to e pay even more. more, like sometimes upwards of $80 just for a $5 transaction or something, which is an insane amount of money, um, which is something they're working on. And I'm still very bullish on Ethereum, right. but the type of things that this can enable are still being thought out uh, but just to give you an idea, um, it enables something called, uh, so you have exchanges, you have uh, like central, all exchanges right now are pretty much centralized, like Binance, Coinbase, uh, GDAX, like your traditional ones. And people have tried to make like decentralized exchanges, but that hasn't always worked um, because, because like, sure, you put in a buy order, but you've put in that buy order now, um, uh, in order for the money to, uh, so, so you put in the buy order, but because the network takes like 10 seconds, 20 seconds, upwards of 10 minutes to validate your transaction, the other person that you bought money from, um, oh, I think even before this, um, we should talk about what a decentralized exchange is and a centralized exchange. Please stop yeah. me yeah. when I'm like, Go ahead. <laughs> when I was, I'm just I was mesmerized and, and just listening. Cause I, I was actually curious. So yeah, go ahead and explain what you mean by decentralized market. Okay. So if people are confused about what decentralized is, is basically not one single entity organization person has, um, has your assets stored. If we're talking about like exchanges, for example, like Binance, uh, in their vaults, in their, they have uh, um, like a, a lot of stored like Ethereum, um, whatever coin that's being transacted so that when I make, when I buy something on their exchange, um, they can fill it that quick because they know that they have the stored assets um, in their vaults and they can make that happen. Right. So but, they're the middleman player that makes the transactions kind of go smoothly. Mm -hmm. and, and we've seen in the past, like exchanges running away with money, exchanges failing, exchanges, uh, that, that's happened a, a lot of times um, in the crypto space. But Let's say now that um, in, it's a decentralized, what would a decentralized exchange look like? So if I want to buy some asset, like let's say um, buy, buy a coin, um, I'm buying it from a person who's right. selling it like directly. Mm -hmm. um, so there's no, there's no middleman in that, in that case. But, but the um, problem in, in today's world is the speed that it takes to fill that transaction. So if there's a, a system or a platform that makes the speed relatively quick to where like whoever, whenever someone puts in a buy order, the other person on the other end is able to like automatically plug in instantly. So that, you know, the fulfillment can kind of go through 
rather than it taking 10 minutes and then the other person kind of leaves and says, like, you know what, I'm not interested anymore. So that, mm-hmm. is that kind of like the situation? Exactly. So the transactions are set, settled within like within less than a second. And so it feels like you're working with a centralized exchange. If you were to use Ethereum as your backbone infrastructure to run a decentralized exchange, that wouldn't be possible. You, you'd make an order and you'd be waiting like 20 minutes. And by the time you're waiting, someone on the other end might have left or, or, or something of that sort. So Solana enables that. So they have something called Serum. Um, their token is SRM. And that's what they have done. So they've created a decentralized exchange that has been working very, very well. And the power of having a decentralized decentralized exchange is is crazy because not only can you trade on their platform, but you can you can plug Serum's protocol into your separate apps. So you can have like a swapping app um, that swaps from like one currency to another. But in the backbone, it's actually using Serum's exchange to make to change. Uh, cryptos and to make those orders so yeah that's that's amazing we're gonna we're gonna save the swapping exchanges for another time but that's something we also have to dive dive deeper into and kind of talk about because that's that's something i want to learn about too um but yeah i have beef with binance honestly personally i i kind of told you about this and you know there's this whole verification thing going on because the united states you know they want people to pay taxes so they you know issued binance to make a separate exchange for the u.s market um, just so they can keep track of the people in the United States. But um, so I'm having a little bit of problems with Binance right now. But, you know, this sounds interesting, like a decentralized exchange would be like, you know, basically, it sounds like more just you're able to complete whatever transactions you want at any time you want without, you know, a third party kind of controlling the, you know, in in a way right now, it's not necessarily super controlled, but, you know, it it does eliminate one more factor in the equation. Yeah, definitely. So, um, so I'd say those are, <laughs> yeah, I, I would, I would count that as, as my fourth pick <laughs> actually. Um, there, so, so Serum is actually using Solana um, in the background. And if, if you want to see a direct use case for Serum, head on to radium.io um, that they're using it there. And they're one of the first ones to plug in a um, decentralized exchange for their swapping mechanism. So yeah, I'm very bullish on the Solana ecosystem. Um, yeah, um, very exciting stuff happening in that space. Um, if you guys are programmers and want to uh, learn more, they're actually doing hosting a hackathon to promote um, more projects to come into the space and help uh, make people build more products. So um, head on to Solana and uh, I'm sure there's something in store for you. Um, but yeah, that's good. Top um, four. Yeah. We just talked about the, you know, four Bitcoin being one, I, I believe also Bitcoin, honestly, number one, it's already established its foundation. It's solidified like its place in the entire market. It was the first, you know, cryptocurrency to kind of, you know, hit the mainstream media and it's, you know, has a lot of like development that's been made towards it. Institutional investors are already in it as well. So it's just overall the safest cryptocurrency to be in. Second one, Roshan mentioned was Ethereum, very huge. And, you know, just overall the Ethereum network and the decentralized apps that are on it as well, which makes it insanely valuable. Solana, we talked about a lot, insanely low fees. And you, you know, saw the demonstration he put out with the transaction speed, which was insane. And in comparison to Ethereum and Bitcoin and how that's going to look. And we also talked about Serum and, you know, decentralized you know, exchanges. So with all of that said, what are the overall risks, you know, involved just with the cryptocurrency market? And what are you, these are kind of two, two questions. What are you most excited for um, in the space as well? Yeah, definitely. Um, obviously there are risks involved. Um, we've seen cryptocurrency market drop by like 30, 40% in a single day, in a single week um, before. Although I will say the market has been a lot more, um, I'd say stabilized due to the fact that institutional investors got into Bitcoin at like um, 35, 40, 45K. So um, that's why like you should definitely invest in like top like 10 
um, crypto um, currencies rather than coins that have low volume, um, just because they're more prone to uh, market manipulation and you could potentially lose a lot of money. So always make sure you know what the risks are. Um, make sure you have access to your funds at all times and scrape profits off whenever you can and buy low again, try, try to do that again. And if you're tra trading on like Binance or any exchange, make sure you put stop losses um, in case market dips and you want to, uh, this is the, this is the money you're, well, this is the only money you're willing to lose. And um, so make sure you have stop losses, make sure you really learn about how to trade before you um, get into the markets, unless you just want to do a long-term play and just accumulate a dollar cost average, which is if you just dollar cost your average through uh, dollar cost average through your uh, pretty much you don't have to think about anything um, a, a, any of those things that I mentioned. Um, I will say keep your cryptocurrencies are very different in that if you lose access or if you lose them, no one's gonna no one's gonna give them back to you. There's nowhere you can go and be like, yo, I, I made a mistake. There's or, no FBIC. Yeah, I accidentally sent it. There, there's there's no there's nothing of that. So make sure you if you create a crypto wallet write down those 12 keywords, 24 keyword phrases that they give you, your private key, keep it locked away and stored in a safe place in case you lose your funds. Or um, you that's can happened countless also, times. Yeah, or you can also stay with a uh, you know, platform like Coinbase where they have wallets that are relatively easy to manage. You just buy your coin, you just keep it. And you just like set, it depends on the, the time you're willing to invest. Like Rashan said, if you want to learn about trading and actually get dive deeper into the cryptocurrency world and be a part of, the big, big changes that are coming up, definitely pay attention to like trading platforms. If you don't have the time, you work a lot, whatever the case may be, but you also want to dabble in the market, check out platforms like Coinbase. They make it easy to enter. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Coinbase, definitely. If you want to uh, just buy and accumulate um, long-term. Um, and they also have like staking there too. So if you buy Ethereum, you can stake it and earn rewards on that. Um, also, I will say um, like on Voyager, for example, you can set up like recurring buy orders. So every day it'll buy like $10 worth of uh, like Bitcoin or Ethereum. That's how I have uh, part of my portfolio set up um, to dollar cost average through other parts of my portfolio or just like uh, are trading um, on Binance and short-term trading. So always like have an, I'm sure like Elijah can do more videos on this in the future about like risk management, but have like different parts of your portfolios. So don't put all your eggs in one basket. Um, there's a lot of opportunities in the space. And if you keep reading more and trying to understand like what the cryptocurrency market is going to do for us in the future, instead of just jumping on, on hype and going with that, you'll be surprised and how much you learn and how much you're just interested in the space and, um, and you're, you're just going to get a lot out of your, your time instead of just investing in like coins, like Dogecoin, Safe Panda and stuff like that, which are, you've probably heard of them a, a lot, like, uh, like moon or safe moon. Um, yes, those are great coins to maybe earn a quick buck on. Um, but you should look into like, what, what are they trying to do? Are they, are they trying to change the world? Are they, um, so make sure you do your research. Cryptocurrency space is a little different. Um, and yeah, and obviously none of this is financial advice also. Um, we are just, college students. We, we are not <laughs> licensed to give financial advice. This is just a conversation that mm -hmm. we just wanted to have to share some insights of what we think and our thoughts. So this is by no means any financial advice. This is just for entertainment purposes only. So don't sue us. We don't have no money. We're college students. <laughs> yeah, like any money that I have personally invested, it's like money that I wouldn't mind losing or I, I would mind losing, but I wouldn't be homeless if I lost it. So make sure you do a proper risk analysis and uh, get in. Guys, I, I've definitely seen people lose money in the 2017 cycle and uh, 
it, it's not too pretty. So make sure you're keeping up with the, the markets and especially with uh, Elijah's channel, because I'm sure he's going to be doing a lot more videos on cryptocurrencies. Um, yeah, make sure to always do your research. Uh, what was the second part of your question? Yeah, so like to kind of wrap it up, what are you most excited about? I know we talked about a lot of exciting things, but what are you personally most excited for in this space? Most excited about just like the innovation and just people imagining new applications, new way of interactions and like just seeing more of that in the space. Like already, um, like there's just so many opportunities for people to um, accumulate and make money and own assets on, in the digital space right now. Like uh, we're gonna do probably another video on uh, staking and uh, and earning rewards through providing services. Like you're, uh, you're lending someone money to borrow. Um, and as a, in turn, you get, you get money for that because you're providing services. Um, you're providing liquidity. Uh, you get uh, money for that. Uh, Basically, I'm very excited about how we can creatively think about solutions um, of going of getting traditional like financial um, instruments and applications in the traditional finance world and bringing them onto the crypto um, and into the crypto world. And we've already seen a lot of successful um, applications of this, like Avi A A V E is a really good example of uh, like borrowing the lending money. Um, and later we can talk about a lot more uh, opportunities for you to get involved with these um, apps and dApps. Um, so there's investing in cryptocurrencies, right? You're investing in coins, but then there's actually like using the coins or the um, tokens like platform and, um, and engaging with their platform and uh, seeing what that's like. And, mm -hmm. um, and so I would definitely recommend or encourage people to, to, to do that, um, mess around with the technology that exists right now. And that's what I'm most excited about. Just like seeing more of like, um, like technologies like Solana, like the type of things that have been, that can be created with there are just like still not having been imagined. So there's a lot of room for innovation, a lot of, um, a lot of growth potential and I'm just really excited to be working for um, for a company that's going to uh, let me let me do that um, and let me be part of that space and surround the people who are equally as equally wanting to to create change uh, there's there's a lot of social change potential there's uh, there's just a lot a lot in store that's gonna it's gonna disrupt a lot of industries and already has and just very excited for that <laughs> huge like it's 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 a huge you know place to be in the cryptocurrency space it's very confusing you know it's it's hard to see like what's going to be on the other side of this you know in today's world because we don't necessarily know no one can predict the future of like what's going to happen but it's i gotta say it's very exciting to just hear about you know all the different things that are going on and the possibilities that can come out of it so I just want to say a huge thank you to you for stopping by and making the time to make this video and talk to, you know, the people on my channel about, you know, just your knowledge and what's going on with this space. I couldn't have given them this level of value in, you know, a short amount, actually within like an hour now of just uh, information packed. So I'll try to, you know, put this into different pieces, but, you know, it's been great. I really appreciate you making the time. I know you're super busy. So we're going to kind of wrap things up there. If you want to hear more from Roshan, definitely destroy that like button and definitely stay safe, stay subscribed to the channel to hear a lot more from him because we're going to be doing a lot more conversations like this. We talk a lot offline, you know, every single time about like different things going on, but I just thought, you know, I got to bring him on here to give, you know, direct information because whenever I'm talking to y'all about what, you know, he's kind of related to me. A lot of things get lost in translation, you know, between when what he tells me and what I'm trying to tell um, other people around me. So, you know, this is huge. I'm glad we took this first step to making this first video and definitely want to see a lot more, you know, just, you know, I love having this conversation. I, I learned so much, like it's insane. So thank you again. I'm going to stop the recording here and 
And thank you, beautiful people, for listening in to this episode. I know this was quite lengthy, but I wanted to bring you guys some value content. And it's very difficult to kind of chop it up into little bits and pieces. I wanted to put this full recording out. I will edit these into smaller chunks if you want to digest it later on in smaller pieces. So, you know, this video, I just really wanted to bring value to people listening to the video to learn about as much, you know, as the technology as they can to see the value in the technology and what could come of it. So this was just one of those videos. We're going to have a lot more content coming for you guys, explaining a lot more about what's going on in the cryptocurrency space. There's a lot more things going on with DeFi, NFTs, and farming and staking that we're going to be talking about more in this channel. So definitely stay tuned if you're new to this channel definitely hit the subscribe button because I promise you there is going to be value on here and definitely make sure you smash that like button if you like this video and if you are anticipating more to come hit me in the comment section if you have any questions for my friend Roshan and I'll be happy to ask him and he can answer those as well anyway it was your boy Elijah and Roshan featuring on here we'll talk to y'all soon peace